The reverse sear is an amazing technique to help you get a beautiful, perfect looking steak like this every time. And in this video, I'm gonna take you step by step on how to do this at home and up your steak game. We want a nice thick cut of meat for our reverse sear. This tomahawk steak is amazing. Ribeyes are great because they have a giant center eye, but they also have a delicious finalis. The only problem is they cook up at different rates. We're gonna start by drizzling it with some olive oil. We're gonna rub it evenly all over. This is gonna help the seasoning to stick when that time comes and also add a little extra fat to our steak. For our seasoning, I'm using a coffee rub. So it's got some cumin, brown sugar, granulated garlic, cayenne, fresh ground coffee, paprika, absolutely delicious. I love it with steak, especially a fatty, steaky cut like a ribeye. And this tomahawk is going to be amazing with this rub. So you want to evenly rub the coating all over the steak. You want to get the sides, the top, the bottom, and then we're going to leave it to cure for 10 to 15 minutes, allowing the moisture to release from the steak and reabsorb some of that seasoning. You can see how the seasonings changed color and gotten really wet. That's from the moisture being pulled out like we talked about. It's the whole curing process. It's gorgeous. Let's get the thermometer in here and get it in the oven. I love these probe thermometers. They're fantastic because the thermometer stays in the whole time while the actual data part of it stays outside of the oven and alerts you when it's ready. We're setting the thermometer to 122 degrees and we're going to put it in the center of the fatty part of the steak. Some people like to do it along the bone, but I feel like this is where you get the best reading for this method. So the steak cooked in a 210 degree oven for about 90 minutes for this size steak. It's a beautiful 122 degrees inside. It's gonna cook up to be a perfect medium rare. Look at the way the steaks change color. It is gorgeous. It's actually very ugly. It's gray, it's kind of muted out, but the inside has a perfectly even temperature all the way through. So when we char it in a pan, it's gonna look absolutely fantastic. But if your steak comes out like this, it is fully cooked. It's just not charred and caramelized. You can see the jiggliness of the meat. It's ready to go. We're gonna preheat our pan with olive oil over medium high heat until the pan is nice, hot, and lightly smoking. You don't want it to be too cool when you put the steak in. Look at that smoke, it looks perfect. Steak goes down and we're gonna let this cook and caramelize on one side until it's a beautiful golden brown color. That's what we're looking for. This is our only chance to get that great crust on that steak, that memorable steakhouse char. You wanna make sure you do the top, bottom, and sides of the steak. See what's happening is, as the steak is cooking, it's beginning to char, the Maillard reaction's forming, which means that the natural sugars in the meat are starting to caramelize. It's important to have a properly pre-seasoned, preheated pan to do this, because if your pan's not hot enough, you're not gonna get a great caramelization, and you're just gonna cook the steak further and further internally. But look at how amazing this thing is. Once our steak has a beautiful caramelization on all sides, we're gonna get it on a pan with a rack, rest it a few minutes, and get it ready to slice. Resting is another extremely important, important step in cooking steak. What's happening is the muscle fibers start to relax and absorb any juices that are flowing inside. Let's start cutting into this and take a look at what we're dealing with. This is amazingly tender. A good sharp knife is essential when you're cutting a steak. You don't wanna shred it. But look at how that spinalis is cooked up perfectly, the tail end of the ribeye. That's normally the part that grays out first when you're cooking a ribeye steak. But this is pink, even perfectly cooked all the way through, similar to the results you get from sous vide the steak. Cut your steak thick because it's gonna give you a chance to really take advantage of and enjoy all the different textures and flavors in the steak and give a little bit of chew to this extremely tender piece of meat. There you have it, a perfectly reverse seared tomahawk steak. Absolutely gorgeous and ready to enjoy.